You're good, Rog. Okay, welcome everyone um, to the uh, modules proposal feedback call. Um, the idea is that we'll get ongoing feedback and discussion about uh, what we're doing with the uh, Q modules. Um, I'll just share my screen, shall I? How do I do that? Oh, it's there. Uh, entire screen. Uh, Right, I might possibly be sharing my screen now. Can you see that? Yep. Good. Um, so uh, yeah, so um, I thought we'd um, you know we'd have have uh, I don't know this time is a very approximate because I haven't timed anything, but you know we'll see. Um, uh, so I thought we'd sort of go into a little bit more into something that came up last time that. Um, uh, seems to be more important and, and worth talking about because it has a number of ramifications in term, uh, particularly um, using like a, a sort of split registry where you want the private private modules to come from one and public modules to come from another um, uh, which is a like a really important use case um, uh, and and you know based on feedback from last time like yeah People definitely don't want to run, you know, run a local, you know, even on a local host. It seems, you know, that's that's not that's a bit too heavyweight for people. So, um, but actually, we can probably do this in. Well, we can definitely do this inside inside the Q command itself. Um, by by, well, I'll go into some details about that. So so um, so the, the the logic for what registry to talk to is actually local, um, and and. That actually uh, means that the sort of auth piece, because we're talking about private modules, the auth piece is is really important. We're not we're not just talking to uh, one uh, one uh, you know one module where with no authentication we have to get that piece really right. Um, but but I think still still we're kind of logically talking to a single registry. So uh, like here's the diagram I came up with, which roughly talks about architecturally uh, how 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 we might put these this thing together so uh we've got q load which knows how to load modules but logically inside that code it's just talking to an interface which has uh oci related methods on it for pull, pulling pull, pulling blobs pulling manifests just looks exactly like uh, any other interface so the point is that if you import QLoad, you do not necessarily get all the dependencies implied by, uh, you know, for OCI authorization. We can keep it relatively lightweight, I think. Um, so the the way it would be it would turn out is uh, like the command Q would set up this kind of um, uh, this kind of structure based on whatever configuration the users provide to be designed, um, and pass that in to QLoad as a as a kind of as something that QLoad can use, um, and and this has been sketched out in the uh, in the CI registry module that, that I've, I've been developing. Um, uh, so so essentially, we're talking about um, some so a kind of uh, modularization of the interface to an OCI registry, whereby we've got some you know an OCI unify package that can uh, that can talk to different OCI clients depending on arbitrary criteria. Um, so, so from this point of view, QLoad is, it thinks it's talking to one registry. So logically it's to a single registry, but inside that still, this is all inside one process, inside it's doing some multiplicating, multiplexing. Um, so that keeps the QLoad stuff nice and solid and, and uh, you know, very uh, core abstraction um where where whereas that other bit can be um can, can be put together in, in lots of different ways depending on uh, arbitrary configuration yeah tony hi yeah um i'm curious where the actual fetching happens is that because like if you think about something like go build versus go install one will fetch dependencies automatically for you without like a go mod or anything. And the other one requires the go mod to be up to date and tidy. Um, and just kind of curious. I mean, you know, currently I, I think go get and go install are pretty much the same these days. Um, they're, they're, I think they're pretty much identical. So, but as far as fetching goes, 
like none of all the all the persistence all the persistence layer is outside of that interface so that's essentially it, it when when it, when q load needs to fetch something it will go through that interface and ask it to uh, and, and, and pull whatever it needs and that will stream through those layers um, back up into q load and it can decide whether to put it into a disk or it, into a disk cache or, or keep it in memory or whatever um if that makes sense um yeah i guess i'm just wondering if there's a way to say like do not try and fetch dependencies during q load I mean that's a matter for uh, for the Q load API itself. There's, right, right, yeah. I'm just like throwing I mean, out like thoughts that came along that, with I mean, like how it all in integrates. Like, can you call load without actually making? Yeah, I mean you know, certainly that's a feature. Internet. Certainly that's a feature which uh, which I think is is useful and probably should should exist. But I think that's kind of orthogonal to to what's going on here. Like like there's definitely okay. because it can decide. Yeah. The, 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 Definitely the, details. The registry interface here doesn't know anything about modules at all, right? It's actually an entirely separate Go module. Um, so Q load can decide exactly what modules to pull, what to do with the data, that sort of thing. So, um, uh, Paul, you had your hand up. No, Tony actually answered the question I was going to ask, which is what 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 was sort of behind your question, Tony? And you said, well. It, when you said, oh, for example, the ability to control whether it hits the internet or not. Yeah, I, I at least in my head, and but I'm this is just my head, the way the Go command controls things in being able to limit uh, and or restrict things or failure modes where, for example, you gave an example of where the go.mod is up is not up to date. I actually think that all commands these days fail if the go.mod is not up to date. And so you have to run a go mod tidy. Uh, sorry, go get being the exception probably to that rule. Um, but something like a go build or a go install will fail, I think, unless it's up to date. So Can I can so run? I'm not sure. Uh, I think they all do. But anyway, so, but it, it, it definitely falls. So that that point that so the the point of that detail aside or not because I think you're raising a good point of how can you as the user of Q load and Q command is one such thing how can we control those things with certain levers it certainly feels like the levers that exist for the Go command today are at least a decent starting point to be able to do that sort of thing of preventing hitting the internet or some such yeah it's even like it may not be that is like okay in my CI process, I want to get make sure I get all my dependencies before shipping off to prod where I don't want to be making these things, even though it's going to be connected to the internet. So there's even like a, a different way to kind of like think about that control. I, I, I mean, like, it, sorry. With, with Go, like you know what does and doesn't happen. I could see the QCLI doing it that way. But as like people who are building on top of QLoad, like if I like today, a lot of programs just use QLoad to just load up Q. There's no thoughts of dependency management. And so, yeah, I guess that API needs to change. Anyway, that's kind of like devil in the details. Yeah, and also, like I mean, like like the way I see it is that you know you configure a queue registry, um, and that's you know maybe maybe the default is the 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 um, the main queue registry. Maybe it isn't, but you could always say you know queue registry equals none means it will never hit the network, right? So, um, and therefore this you know that that th this whole um tree does not does not come into existence because you said q red streak was none so bang no 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 internet access daniel i think we've spoken enough about this so i'll i lowered my hand <laughs> oh and it's good there aren't that many slides so you know anything anything you ha happen to contribute is is useful i, I wanted to briefly clarify, clarify i think what Tony and Paul were talking about is that Go build used to add missing dependencies to Go mod if they didn't exist already. But now it's only Go getter or tidy that do it. But um, so, so I think that was the first thing that people found surprising about like Go build just too much. It's that new dependencies would be added when you were just trying to do a Go build. And the other one is downloading stuff from the internet. And Go proxy off does that. And I think that's what Roger was talking about. But there's a little quirk with Go proxy off or, or the equivalent with Q is that. It depends, the result depends on your state of the cache, right? And I think that's going to surprise a lot of people because if you run a build with no internet access and your cache is warm, it might work. And for somebody else, it might not work. And there's also, 
and because the cache gets trimmed over time, if it's well written, I think it's going to be slightly wonky. So in general, I, I don't think people should use it. But I, I think I think we, you know we need to, we need to provide vendoring support. You know, which yes. is which is equivalent to well, pretty much equivalent to what people already have in in PKG in Q dot mod slash PKG. Um, kind of not not exactly equivalent, but because of course the you know this. They, they work slightly differently, but but I think that's the kind of moral equivalent of what people are doing with with Q, PKG directory now. Yeah, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that it's it's strictly better than relying on a cache to be warm because the cache gets trimmed automatically, so you can never truly rely on it. Yeah, I have to say I had no idea about that Q, that that Go feature anyway, and I, I'm not sure I want to know. <laughs> I'm not going to use it. Yeah. Um, Oops, wrong with the screen. Uh, yeah, so so in terms of you know implementing the sort of authorization piece, um, which so, so above we've got that OCI auth block, which is handling authorization for all those uh, for for any registries that you're talking to. Um, now I think it's I think it's really important to be able to if someone already is talking to their some private registry. And they have, you know, a Docker config file that that has their both methods configured. I think it's, it, you know, it's crucial that we we uh, support those kind of the standard methods out of the box because otherwise people are going to have a rubbish user experience. We don't want people to make an entirely separate config file just for um, Q uh, talking to Q uh, OCI registries via Q. Um, but another but to go along with that we in the q project we are very strict about our dependencies because uh we actually want the core q repository to be pretty dependency lightweight it's supposed to be pretty low level we don't want to be dependent on uh fairly large um large repos and for example like if you look at how all the existing tools um various existing tools scopio etc and how, how they do their um authorization their, their auth piece uh, they all import docker cli which isn't great from our point of view to be honest um uh which because for, for for various reasons um it's it's just got lots of dependencies it's it doesn't follow semver etc um so um and and but so i think we we'll plan on doing our own implementation um, by copying as much code as we can and and well as little code as we can but but as much code as necessary um, there are a bunch of edge cases involved in authorization which uh, w which need to be got right um, that so I mean this one I've, so I've been talking with this guy John Johnson who's a uh, go container register maintainer and uh, very big in the sort of OCI ecosystem um and uh he's he's very supportive because he, he's not happy with any of the existing solutions so that's that's encouraging to start with um and he's also you know some, some of the edge cases he can bring to the conversation are really helpful like you might have thought that when something demands a scope or uh, you know demands read access that if you provide a, a auth token that has scope read and write that it might work it turns out not to be the case for some registries because um, they see the token having read and write and they say oh you need write access then uh and you don't have write access to this particular repo so no right so this is this is not 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 hugely helpful um but but really useful to uh, to, to to know about some of those um and there's another uh, so there's there's an open question i have so this isn't about authorization and stuff but this is about the design of how we store modules in the uh, in OCI registries, and I realised that one thing that we're assuming I've assumed in the proposal is that each module lives in its own OCI repository. Um, you know, a reminder for those uh, listening who don't know much about OCI: a repository is just a name within an OCI repository. You have this kind of name, and within the name, you've got various tags uh and so we're assuming that if you you know clone a load of modules to your say your private repository or your uh, a particular repository that you can push all your modules to uh a, a name which matches that module name and we've carefully choosing the module name um, syntax restrictions so that that's compatible however 
it occurs to me and i don't really know because i am not i'm not familiar in this space very well that for some repositories or registries rather that might not be viable maybe you only get access to a single repository in which case that's not going to be that useful or maybe it's a real hassle to create new repositories and you have to go through some some manual step um so like so this is my question to anyone listening um is is that an, an okay assumption to make because there is another there is another possibility um that we could you know you could potentially store one module you can have one tag per module and tags are very restrictive in terms of uh, or really quite restrictive in terms of what they can have in them like uh they, they can only be 127 bytes long which kind of rules out putting them on and they can't have slashes in so you 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 it kind of rules out both encoding the module name at, uh, um, directly um uh, the entire module name uh, and, and putting the whole module name in there. But you could like take some hash of it and the base that you do encoding, say, um, and put it. So that was an example. Here's an example of what uh, what it might, what it, what, what it could look like. So you could do that, but that's not great. I, it's not fantastic because then you get all these opaque uh, module you know, tags in there. You have no idea which module name. Oops. Oops. Sorry. I clicked on it um uh, you have no idea what this what that module name might be um so you'd have to like if you wanted to actually enumerate all the modules in your in your registry well you could go through and read every one and read the go.mod file the q.mod file for each one but that's going to be involved loads of round trips it'd be really efficient for if it, you could make it more efficient but then like by having something else containing an index file which tells you about those things but then there's always issues of it getting out of step and that's sort of, so there's a bunch of so if we can avoid doing that i think i would want to but but that's um that that is an, an open question in my mind that um that would be um jonathan yes you have the answer uh, it, you're asking if it's okay uh, it's yeah. okay at this end uh i th i think it's the sort of thing where it might be worth just accumulating instances where people said this was a problem. So it feels like going f forward, stepping from the stepping from the current design to something with some additional things sounds like a a thing that you could afford to punt till later, unless you've got a load of people coming in now and saying, no, this would absolutely be a problem. So this is a vote for it is not a problem. Cool. Okay, that's uh, Tony. Do you have any um, any any thoughts in this respect of interest? Uh, let me see if I understand the problem first. It's that uh, uh, really, I may have drifted off into other problems, but related in general, like is the problem about the pro just the developer having the like workflows in place to just create a new repository within a container registry to hold this new module they're making that's basically it although or they, or they might, that is or they or they blocking. might well they might want to like for example say you want to be able to develop against you know you want a, a sort of a clone or you know some a, a, like an actual you want your private thing to have you don't want it to you want don't want to be hitting the main the main uh the main repository at all perhaps you want to oh you mean like the querying of it or just Sorry? the general uh, i guess i'm wondering like i think there's maybe two things here like one it's like i don't want to talk to any other registry or just this set of registries or like the allowed set or are we talking about like i think go private where it's like don't query against this one it's more like if you're if you want to clone a bunch of modules like 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 say we have a, a certain like mirror them or clone a certain them. allow list of modules that we that we kind of say you know this is okay um that these modules are okay and we, we we want to populate our private mod our private registry with all of those right and um and, and, the, and then uh, and then run qget and qmod tidy and all that sort of thing against that um and uh, you know update dependencies and that sort of thing but only against my private registry is it in general okay to assume that people can create like hundreds or maybe thousands of new repositories one for each module that they might be uh, might be using 
or may or is it actually is that like no nah, actually that's that's good. yeah that's i would not call people. that a problem like if we're going to do something like that we're going to set up the like necessary permissions ourselves to make sure that that we can do it at that scale uh -huh. and things um, like that like i was thinking you know with google container registry in the cloud like you don't even have to cr you just create a registry and then like repositories with under that are just like magic like okay. you just push folder structure like you just put paths in the name and it just makes it for you um and it's not like necessarily like they aren't um, in that case they aren't necessarily permit we haven't set it up to permission i'm not sure if you actually could okay that's 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 super useful because because that essentially means that the user can uh organize their own right well, on github container registries i have to go and make it one for one i assume there's a way to do that with an api as well though so that would like i was doing it by hand for the like three or four i have but i assume if like i had to make them one by one like i would do that it would just be in a loop with like the other modules i want to like clone and so, so one 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 significant example that I'd say where it's not possible, for example, is the Docker registry itself, right? Where all uh, everything in the Docker registry has to be username slash name, right? And you mm -hmm. can't have any slashes below that, right? So that that would be a place where if you wanted to push Q modules to that registry, you basically couldn't, right? As as the current design goes. I mean, I'm not sure that pe that that's a good idea because it's basically it's supposed to have real containers and not arbitrary artifacts in that registry. But that's a, you know, that it occurs to me that that's that that's an example of a registry with quite severe restrictions on naming and access. Sure, but like, I guess why why couldn't we pu publish a, a Q module there? Because because um, Docker the Docker registry is, um, uh, enforces the fact. That there is only one slash in any repository name but would that be why would that be a problem i guess for sure? because module module names so if you wanted to uh you know push a module named foo.com slash bar slash baz well that's got more than one slash in it and also the you don't control the username right because it's the host name well i guess my module name in that case would be like doc, could be docker.io slash my username slash yeah, okay. but but you want to be able to push, you want to be able to push other people's modules as well, right? So that they're they're accessible. I think. Mm, I don't, yeah, well, I guess you wouldn't couldn't use Docker Hub as a place where you could essentially mirror other modules for yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't see that as like, uh, like a blocker. Like, okay, like we're not going to try and support mirroring on Docker Hub because that doesn't make sense in general. But like with Google Container Registry, you can do it there. I'm not sure which other ones you can or can't with. Yeah, I mean that's 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 uh, yeah. I I I think that it's okay, and that that yeah we don't want to. But but that's that's why I'm putting it out there because it's a uh... yeah. I think there's a. I still have a lot of open questions as well around this. How do we map like users' intention of like these modules should come from here or there with this auth kind of question that. Maybe I saw it somewhere on a different slide, but I thought you were, there was something about a config file. Yeah, I could. Uh, um, I'll go back to that in a moment, Paul. Do okay. A moment. Do you have something to say in the meantime? Yeah. No. No. Just very briefly, I think Jonathan made the salient point about the fact that um, there's, a, and Tony's sort of backing it up, is that everybody feels like, particularly with the example of say Google Container Registry, even GitHub Container Registry, that there isn't. A restriction per se in a registry that you can't just create loads of repositories my only question was going to be do we envisage something like qmod this is kind of built on a point that tony made do we envisage qmod publish presumably creating repositories therefore as necessary yes fine okay so then tony i think that then addresses your point where you said oh there's perhaps some api that's um possible to create a repository because presumably Raj that whole creating a repository thing is part of the standard OCI registry API and we would just be calling that standard API in order to create such a registry so that all sounds fairly reasonable I mean certainly I'm not sure I was not able to like 
push to GitHub container registry until I went into the GitHub API and created what was called a package, which is like how they map it. It's not great. Like, interesting. We only use it because that's where we publish all of our like, like you know, official assets or come from GitHub. Uh, yeah, doing. yeah, and so that's that that that's part of part of the interesting part of this is like yes you 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 might need to publish because all your assets come from there um also there's i say there's you create repositories through the api it's not strictly true you push entities to git repositories and you know I, i've taken it to be that if you push something to a repository x then that repository is created in the process but that's not necessarily the case. It could easily be that you have to create repository X first and then you can push things to it, right? So Yeah, yeah, for sure. And oh, even I think sense. within or organizations, even if like you can set get uh, Google Tain Registry up to just be like created on the fly or like it doesn't even care. Um, I think there's certainly people with the desire to limit what developers can and can't create from just a security standpoint. But, yeah, so that was actually going to be my second point, Tony, um, is that um, even though the, the, there isn't a restriction per se, I just wonder how quickly people are going to want to um, not, not limit things per se, but just imagine that they want to say, oh, um, you can create as many registers cheapest sorry i'm gonna i'm gonna keep mixing up registry and repository and please just raise a hand or throw something at me if i get it wrong wow. again yeah um you can create as many repositories as you like but they must and i'm just going to wave my hands here because i don't understand the oci space particularly well they must be named in the following way or sit under this namespace or some other you know hand wavy thing which we can't control nor predetermine so i just wonder whether and this is kind of related i guess to and i don't want to set hairs running when we don't need to so i think we could just say let's just assume we can create whatever repositories we like day one and as jonathan said earlier on we could just put what i raised there in that same category rogers oh if only you if you only have one repository then we can think about how we might solve that in that sort of later bucket. I just, I don't know whether, yeah, whether that, that's something we should sort of proactively try and raise with folks now just to make sure we don't, because if, if, say, for example, we get six months down the line and there's then a sufficient number of people using this and they're saying, well, actually, for our on-premises OCI registry, we have these security constraints or, or some other constraints, right? That mean you can't name the repositories X, Y, or Z. How, how much, you know, I, it doesn't feel like we've backed ourselves into a corner, but I'm just trying to think out loud to see where that issue might come in and what it might manifest as. I, I, I clearly don't know what I'm talking about, so that, I, that makes it hard. I don't think we back ourselves into a corner, actually. I think we can make both of these things work fairly seamlessly, uh, you know, it, using the same kind of um, configuration. Um, Jonathan. I was just going to suggest having effectively naming constraints at the remote end, could that be seen through a slightly, could there be something in the space of the mapping that Tony mentioned earlier that, that might have a sort of a more sort of holistic view of what's it like to be mirroring them? What's it like to be, I don't know, for want of a better word, mocking things in, putting test art if test modules in place when you're developing modules or doing big bumps to them. Is there something that about the, the mapping of what I'm referring to locally and the, the OCI repo that i go and fetch that where there might be a sort of a, a solution in this space which solves all those problems in one with some sort of local mapping aspect to it solving the problem of you can't you've, you've got to call things in this sort of name or, or whatever it might be i don't know it's just just I mean, that's that's certainly something that i um that i'm envisaging in this like where where we've, where we've got this um this kind of this unification thing this thing talking this is 
this has all kinds of possibilities like uh, like uh, basically unlimited possibilities for how this decides where and when to talk to the various um multiplex things and um i mean as it is uh you know i was expecting that you have some kind of like when you say q registry it looks like a uh a a, a, a contain a reference like it had, would have a, a name and a path and that path would be the prefix to all the names that it finds within the within the so that that just a prefix is in itself a, a kind of um, uh, an enforcement of structure right because everything is going to be inside that prefix but the, there's you could put anything locally you could yeah as you talk about adding mocks and that sort of thing that that all fits in this in this uh, kind of possibility very easily i think without without changing the you know everything below oci auth there is like essentially an arbitrary tree of stuff that can be do but interesting can be composed in interesting in different ways i think but um, just going back to your, to, your, to your bullet point you had a second page a second ago um the you had a sort of a direct mapping uh it was the one before that one no the, the ones where you were basically saying uh, the assumptions the one where you asked is is, is that okay um oh, the, this this one yeah. yeah so when you say there that module foo.com slash bar is its own repo uh, tr where they're effectively trailing foo.com slash bar in, in the same space as i might well want to say when i'm consuming this nested set of modules each of which have their dependencies and for whatever reason i need to substitute in a custom uh, something at a sort of a, a an arbitrarily nested point in that that hierarchy of imports of things that i otherwise don't control um would that not solving for that might that not be able to then then solve for the problem of there of, of there being a restriction here where i need to import something that's called foo.com slash bar but it's it's not something that can live in the repo called foo.com slash bar. Like that 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 mapping piece seems to be something where the I don't know if I like what you were suggesting before about where it sits in that that um that diagram of of, of entities felt like it was still going to have the it, it was going to have the solution higher up as opposed to lower down i don't know i'm sorry i'm i'm i'm, I'm just saying obviously seeing this for the first time so i'm, I'm just trying to... yeah i mean essentially we, we're like here we're talking about like in this in this example we've got command q there's some configuration in some form whatever whether it's an environment variable a file or whatever that tells command q that you know maybe private stuff is coming from private registry public registry is coming from and it it uses that configuration to form this this essentially this tree of uh, of of registry implementations uh, of, of, of this, this thing that in the at the top level just looks like a registry and th what, what what the powerful thing I think about about the um, uh, yeah probably probably that's a good idea um, the, the, this is a powerful thing about that I quite like about the OTA registry thing is that we have we can easily compose these things so you can. For example, have filters. You can have things that uh, arbitrarily change the view of something that's underneath to to uh, present it in a different way to something that's further up the up the tree, if you like. Um, so you can uh, you know take one registry and make it available, uh, for example, under an entirely different prefix um, into the registry that you see. Um, or you could take something that's only yeah, well, in memory and unify that in, and that sort of thing is this related to like vanity domains and things like that and how do we i like, i also kind of, like is this going to be q and we have all the power of q to do all these things to make uh, this so cool? potentially although i i'm always wary about making the low levels of q dependent on q itself because that can result in uh, awkward bootstrapping issues um but probably um i think i think probably given that Q module files are in written in Q anyway, right? So we, we, we've got to be uh, at, at one level up um, anyway. Um, uh, vanity domains, I don't think so. I think this is after like vanity domains. Like so, the domain of a thing is independent. 
and and this this what we've talked about a few times before the domain the you know vanity domain is independent of the registry that ha has, that that you're getting that module from you, you, uh, the vanity domain is a way of naming a module but it's not a way of necessarily of knowing exactly where you have to go to get that module from um right so that's but it's somewhat related because i do have to figure out where to go get that mod modules under that vanity from someone does but hopefully that will be um that will be like the main you know the the central the central registry or, or or whatever we put in front of it that can be responsible for putting stuff under vanity domains um alternatively if you're if it's private and you control the vanity domain or you just push it to your local registry with something under that vanity domain and that's that's fine right you 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 know where your vanity domain is hosted uh you your um you know where your registry is you can push to something inside named after the vanity domain inside your registry if you like could a two different I mean, maybe i'm holding this wrong but with a vanity domain if i could i get two different modules from two different registries well, so that's the that's the that's the entire point of making it DNS based, right? So if you control the vanity domain that 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 you're interested in here, I mean, yes, of course, you could get two modules from two different registries if you if you push them, if you're responsible for them, or if or if you get it from someone else's registry that you don't trust that you control. Well, then you might somebody might well decide to create a module named after your vanity domain in their registry but that's why we have um the idea of having a central registry which actually does the check to make sure that you really control the vanity domain and so so any any anything under a given vanity domain inside the central registry is really published by whoever controls the vanity domain right um and you know, if you publish, if you yourself publish the different modules to do two two different modules named the same to two different your own registries, you're kind of shooting your own. You're shooting yourself, really. And it's, well, it just it, it slightly depends because in a private context, that can and might well absolutely happen. In the public scenario, it's somewhat different, but in a private situation, it, it's it, it's more complicated as to it, it, it's not under. Um, any one person specific control how that process is controlled right so you could end up with different versions on different registries i think the only point that i would make here is that if i as a consumer of modules am using say q load via command q doesn't matter which and i try to resolve example let's imagine my vanity domain is example.com slash blah for example right the the way that w this this uh configuration would work using this multiplexing it would only go to one registry it wouldn't be possible to say that example.com comes from well i don't think we should support anyway example.com comes from here and here that i i don't think we would do that it would be like a single routing that says this pattern grab it from here that's it i, I mean you could you know essentially be that would be like redundancy it would be like we're pulling for both of these and you oh, probably true. check check that you know because actually after you've get after you've resolved a tag it's all content address for right so you know exactly what you want to get so you can probably get it from either you can do parallel fetching or, or whatever whatever seems to be fastest um so that's it it, it, it can be it, but you, you know you're really unifying those two registries right and maybe that's okay um that's an interesting way to hold it Yes, at least in my head, I'd imagine that as not being something we would necessarily support. But if, as that name OCI Unify suggests, it is performing a unification, then it wouldn't be crazy to. I, I mean, there is an implementation currently, and that's what I, that's what I did. Just you know, it's a very it's a simple operation. We unify everything, and then when you push, you push to both. But that's just because it was the first thing I did, and it was trivial to implement. Um, but there's there's loads of um there's basically there's loads of possibility for saying you know what do we want we can we can make uh we can we can put these things together in a way that mirrors the kinds of uh, operation that we want 
um and and i i quite that's why i quite like this this um disconnect between q load which just knows about talking to a, a single registry and all that other stuff which has potentially arbitrary complexity in terms of the kinds of configuration you might want to talk about the kinds of things you might want to set up uh, at least for me personally i'm very much sold on that, that separation um it, it was just that specific point on the the loading um and yeah interesting i hadn't considered holding it the way you had thanks um and and the the and tony you were talking about the configuration um you notice that dotted line which totally means different things are different bits of the diagram <laughs> so in the case of i see i registered our interface that's like oh it's a dynamic type you know it's, this is this is something that qlo doesn't know about but in the case of oci auth there it is talk it's actually talking to the file system um and actually reading like the docker config file for example whatever config files seem to be necessary in order to um to configure your authorization and authentication and in, uh you know there's a one that there's a there's a you know there's a well-used standard for that um which we would support uh which basically supports mapping uh auth uh like hostname and realm to helper for uh, like either a helper command which is run to do the authorization uh or, or like a password for example um and that's 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 fairly I think that would be basically exactly the way you would configure, you know, Docker itself to to talk to given registries. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're more or less doing. Yeah, um, but that wouldn't be in queue because it's not because because Docker doesn't do queue, right? Sadly. Wouldn't that be another reason you can't import Docker CLI so that they could eventually adopt queue? Otherwise, you'd have circular dependencies. I mean, that's there are a bunch of reasons why I don't want to report that, <laughs> import that module. That one seems most important to me, though. <laughs> it's it's actually I don't think I don't think it's got a huge amount in there that's really necessary. Um, there's there's a couple of types, um, not not a huge amount of logic that we, you'd actually need from it. I think that's the thing, right? It's more about keeping the dependency graph small, yeah, um, than anything else. I it, like. Um, I was the, how's the say going Be, uh, better uh, better a little copying than a little dependency or something like that um, is that rob pike said something like that i think i think that sounds so, so i think it's one of his code, 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 yeah i think so just copy the code for, <laughs> for some for some things i think i think that's there's it, there's a lot to be said for for that rather than having this dependency particularly on something as big and complex as that and as fast moving and Either. Well, I think it's more that it it has very wide responsibilities that module, right? Docker CLI, right? And and that's where, if you if we have a dependency on it, then you the, just the way the single build graph works, at least as I understand it, you everything then gets impacted by it in any consumer of the go uh, in, in the consumer of the queue module at that point. If they if you're using the Go API, yeah, and that that's not what you want to be creating is problems for people who only want to create a dependency on Q, but find that Q's dependency on something like Docker CLI actually creates dependencies problems for them. And yeah. that's the situation to avoid. So I think it's it's more that, it, yeah, exactly as you say, Rog, is the, if they're copying subject to license and or just re-implementation or whatever John or others might suggest is the best way forward on it, just keeping a very small dependency um, that helps keep people's dependencies problems down. And I think that's probably what we're trying to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, one 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 particular th thing about it is for Docker CLI, it doesn't even have a go.mod file. So it doesn't even declare what dependencies it, it actually is, which is it's not great uh so uh, oh yeah and actually i i will mention this and the reason they do that they don't do that as, as as i understand it is because they have existing tags which look like uh look like go tags but um but are actually look, look at go version tags but are actually date based um so they have those existing tags and if go had used its own version tag namespace like we're proposing to do for Q, then I don't think they would have had the problem at all. They could just have published independent Go versions and use Semvir and all that. Um, so I think that's kind of interesting data point and, and part of the 
that was an example of the sort of problems I was trying to um, work around by uh, by suggesting that we all you know Q Q version tags always start with Q hyphen, so they don't conflict with existing versions. Uh, right. Um, yep. So so in terms of moving forward, um, this is the basic um, approach: is that uh, the first thing to do is push some experimental packages uh, inside Q um, to do with modules. So, so they're basically underlying supporting code for pulling pushing modules to an OCI registry. Um, there's a bunch of semi-vendored code, uh, vendored and uh, not not vendored, but but there's uh, some uh, some packages from golang.org/xmod which have been uh, um, altered to fit. For, 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 for this purpose um, and once those are in then um, then we'll run up a, our own registry implementation which is probably going to be if it's feasible um, just a lightweight proxy on top of some uh, ne on, on top of some uh, some other things so we don't have to hard fork some other dependency some other registry we could just take something out of the box and push our put our uh, our registry, uh, the central registry implementation on top of it, um, also enabling us to add arbitrary API. Um, for example, we might want to support some sort of metadata. There's all sorts of possibilities for um, what might uh, things for some endpoints outside of the actual core OCI spec. So that will depend on the on the module code, um, and once once that's there, then we can have um, some um, some actual stuff in CMDQ, which uh, which uh, which uses that registry. Um, uh, and that at that stage, uh, there should actually be um, uh, usable and potentially useful, if only experimental. Uh, should we talk? We didn't add a slide for when the next call is, which we should. We apologize. did not, did we? Every and two apologies. weeks, it's, it's scheduled, right? It is scheduled every two weeks, but we should also have led with apologizing for not having the call last week and or updating that we weren't going to have the call last week because today is the rescheduled call from last week. Um, and the next call is actually on the 31st of August. What with it being summer, summer. in Europe, um, we, are, we have sort of some vacations times that sort of makes just get organizing the next call logistically a bit tricky so the 31st and the calendar is updated with that as well and we'll similarly send out a, a discussion announcement like last time just so that we have a a place to center um announcements like this so. yeah um and thanks for coming along and engaging it's uh, it's it's really helpful and useful and validating um, so, uh, does anyone have any questions? I have maybe not necessarily. Well, I guess I have questions and thoughts. Um, with the uh, OCI paths, um, I think there's a question about like how should we name things and what naming patterns should we support. I think like following DNS rules and like whatever Kubernetes does. That's kind of like what we've standardized on because there's it's a it's hyphens and lowercase letters and dots and slashes and i think that's it and that's like pretty consistent across like all the other places we need to use it these names and just trying to drive consistency there um in terms of module then, names right but then you, i think the, that was on the slide where you're talking about like if i'm going to mirror something right i need to have in a sub path a domain, something that looks like a domain name. So can one of those path components support, what characters can they support, right? Like that foo.com uh, foo in the middle of the Q and bar, right? I think yeah. that's what your question was about, if that's yep. supported. I mean, yeah, so basically the, the restrictions we're pro what I'm proposing is are uh, that um, essentially the, exactly the restrictions that are documented in the uh, OCI specification for repository names and those uh, do allow pretty much all the pet domain names um, that, that they, they, there's some actually I made a change recently to the spec uh, to, to allow some of the uh, 
uh, variance that Docker itself allows, because I noticed there's a discrepancy between the spec and what Docker allows. Um, uh, so you should be able to, I think, I think as long as a given registry adheres to the spec in terms of its, you know, allowing everything allowed by that particular regular expression, then we should be good. Uh, and then my thought was, um, following on this, in a world where we have, what's the word, we're for, multiple modules in like the same Git repository, right? Like you can have poly or mono repo go mm -hmm. code. How would that look? Like can in Go, can you have like one module and then nested modules? Maybe it's more about nested modules than anything else. You absolutely can in Go. And and initially, and I, I think it's, I, I think it's, it's, it, it can be really problematic in Go. It can be can give rise to some really awkward error messages when you've got, you know, you're importing from module path and it's kind of ambiguous which module right. it comes from because that module has changed over time. Um, and initially I was very much like, oh, we shouldn't do that. We should, if we can avoid that kind of pain then in queue, then, then we should. Um, but over time I've come to sort of understand that I, I think it's hard to avoid really and, and and i suspect that yeah in q we will have to support nested modules um, so then my question is i'm not sure the oci registries can they support nested image I, manifests like that like in the path yeah i mean like in a sense every different repository in an oci thing repository there's no slash is just a character right there's no nesting they're just different strings as I understand it. Yeah, I'm not. Because like when I go to Google, Google Container Registry, if I'm on like what would be the, the root of a nested module, like it's going to be a directory listing, not like an image manifest. I mean, it's something I could probably test out pretty easily. I mean, I just haven't had any Google problems. Container Registry does. I'm yeah, just wondering if there's like something we haven't thought about there. Yeah, I mean, it would be. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's okay. Like, there's nothing. There's certainly nothing in the in the standard that says that there's any relationship between two repositories with different names, regardless of you know if one's foo and the other's foo slash bar. There's there's no relationship between those from a, in a technical standard sense. But it's quite possible that some repositories, some registries. Sorry. <laughs> It, Sorry, it's catching. Implemented, right? Say, say, say that there is some like, you know, I mean, one one example of that. Well, maybe I can't push to a repository named foo slash bar unless I've already created a repository named foo. Now, I think that's unlikely, right? But but maybe that's the case. Yeah, when I push to Google Container Registry, like I could push like arbitrary depth, and it yeah. doesn't matter. But I, 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 I'm pretty certain, although, um, yeah, it's well worth, well worth. But I'm not sure if I push a prefix image, then I can, uh, I can then push a subdirectory image under that path name. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I, I would be. I don't think we've ever encountered it in any of my work. I, I would be surprised if you couldn't, honestly, but um, because because they are just technically there's no there's no directory structuring as such. Um, it definitely but feels I'll, like I'll double check. Yeah, it definitely feels like there's um, a, a suite of sort of assumptions or so, or such like that, that we have here that are worth writing tests for at some level. I mean, in, in the loosest sense, right? Uh, such that we can actually back that up against whatever registry we might be interested in. Because it, to both of your points, right? The spec might say one thing, but um, what are there some saying about the plans hitting reality or whatever and when there's natural implementation that's actually the only thing that matters for the registry you're talking to yeah i mean certainly I've, otherwise. I've not not had this problem with any of the registries that i've tried so far which is which have just been like zot and docker you know the, the docker registry uh you know what you get when you see docker run registry um but but there might be in in the deployed registries yeah, it would be worth worth trying, and we should probably have a like a conformance test suite kind of thing that says, yeah, does this registry? It, can we can we support this registry for Q modules? Yep. 
and you might end up with something like a you know a feature matrix like if you're going to back it by google container registry or amazon mm. container registry these are the features that those you know back end support you know like, so like google supports immutable tags maybe aws doesn't you know these kinds of things yeah totally hmm. slightly over time it is um, about six minutes late so oh we did yeah that's a fair point i have one more question it doesn't need to be answered now it's not like related to anything we talked to today but it came up in something i was doing the other day is like um how do gen like do the gen and user directories fit into dependencies and like it's probably a larger like outside of it incorporates more than just dependency management but like if i write a module that other people are supposed to use and i've used it like i've generated the kubernetes api interface and then added those like filled in the port for example right and then somebody imports that how do that how does that get reflected I think I think that's a that's a great question and one that I've thought about quite a bit. Um, so, like at the moment, that the the gen and the user directories are these kind of special things that sit alongside PKG um, and kind of unify automatically unify with them. Um, and my gut feeling is that essentially those should probably just go away in in, in terms. I was just going to say that. <laughs> Uh, in, in the in the like if i've if i've generated some code and i want to you know uh, and i want to kind of add stuff to that code i can potentially just put more files in that package directory right um and you know have some convention for showing which are which are generated and which are not that kind of thing right um so that yeah, i mean it's not like the capability goes away we just stop putting it in the package yeah gen. exactly you force so the user to choose where they're going to essentially put it in their own code base exactly yeah yeah that's, i agree that's, with that. because i because i think that that because because essentially it's not really different like you're generating it and then you're publishing it but what you're wanting to publish is sort of uh, uh you know uh, uh, an enhancement of what's generated so so but just putting it all inside the same package seems kind of right to me and maybe there are features which enable you to combine different packages into one uh, and in fact that's you know they already are right because you can import something and you can embed it you can port something else you can embed that and you get the unification of the two essentially so you can you could that that's also a possibility um i guess then where does the like you know today is generating like kates.io slash whatever right and where does that then how does that get named if it's going to be in my own module so i would i would put that so for one, we don't have any notion of internal packages, right? And I, and I think that that's kind of important to have, um, to be able to have, uh, you know, packages that you can import yourself from within your own repository, but others can't, i.e. not that aren't part of the API contract that you want to uh, export, if you can call it an API. Um, uh, I was like um that would be like goes slash internal directories exactly 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 so what i'm thinking is that the, the generation code rather than putting it into gen should put it into i don't know say internal slash kates.io slash blah 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 right so so then you yeah, would just have a dash o flag to let them decide i mean it work. kind of or it does already but but by, by default <laughs> because there's no gen directory right so where where does gen happen normally well okay you 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 put it into somewhere inside your current module because that's essentially what you're doing right you're, you're you're making something available to your local module comprising some generated some code that some q code that you have generated the the downside of that of course is that the import parts become nasty because the import parts have well, your own, own module well, name well, slash well. internal slash kate.io but maybe that's just maybe that's right you know maybe that's just like if you want to import kates.io slash blah 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 well then you should be importing the real thing the thing that everyone shares the understanding of and in, in that namespace right so yeah so yeah another thought i had on this coming from some i've been doing next.js recently and in their like build configuration file you can at least just for the current project right you can set up these like at things so you don't have to keep repeating your own module name over and over and over again yeah 
Although this... and, uh, wondering if there's some way to say like within this module like use this like at some name to map onto this like much longer directory name but it only I mean, that, works in the current module because that, that, can... that is certainly feasible the desirability right. of that is open to question like like go for example has made has has a very strong stance on you know you import something you have absolute paths as the import paths and that means that if you see some code then you know what module it's impl it, it's importing whereas if you have that at thing well you have that code and it's at slash foo well, i have no idea it's dependent on some some configuration and we're kind of moving away from that a little bit uh because we are supporting that for major versions where the configuration files says which major version of a module you're importing but still it's it's not a huge distance right you're still getting that some version major or minor of that module uh paul the, um yeah i'm just um minding the time slightly but just my only thought was that if we do retain and i haven't thought through this as much as either of you um uh if we do retain some concept of like gen or especially user to like supplement a a dependency in some way shape or form that that would only have effect in the main module and would not be something that it, so i can't imagine kind of to back up the point you were making rogers if i'm writing a module uh, and i'm an author of a module that others consume then I wouldn't use that because then my module is not the main module. So I would, if I wanted the users of my module to benefit from, for want of a better phrase, from that from that supplemental code, then I would place it in exactly alongside whether generated or user the the, the actual generated code or whatever it might be, right? But as a main module author, I I'm not imagining that there's a consumer of me okay then i think that whole thing of i don't know i kind of like the user pattern where if i want to just supplement something that i have it uh, that i they import in various places that i can do so in a sort of a cross-cutting way so i'm not advocating for it per se but at the same time it is a it it has a nice feeling to it to yeah yeah to do I... something like that because it it what it means is that i can maybe it's a bit lazy and sloppy and that it means that well the upstream hasn't done this so let me fix it here and i can then just move on in such a way that it's it's orthogonal it's, it's i've separated the concern it's outside of my i haven't had to do some sort of create my own package to then import my own package it, it's it's something i sort of have the view of upstreaming but i'm not going to go to that effort to now effectively um so maybe that's a bad pattern. So maybe it's, <laughs> maybe that's an argument against it. I don't know. But so that was just a random thought out loud. Yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, I, I kind of I, I know exactly where you're coming from. It's it's it feels nice to be able to say I will import that, but actually I'm getting that constrained in some way or with some additional detail, right? And, and I, I think and that I think it feels like a really powerful pattern, but I'm not sure that the user directory is the way to do that, right? I, I think that it's entirely possible to say, for example, you could say in a um, in a configuration true, file, yeah. uh, you know, actually, uh, you know, when I import this something from this module, actually, I'll import it from both of these places, right? Or you know, the, the sort of unification, automatic unification, which is kind of what you're getting with with user, right? Except in a, uh, and like I can totally see that in a like okay, I I I understand that this module should have these con should should look like this. Why okay, I'll write a constraint and say that it does actually look like this. And then if it doesn't look like this, then because it's all it's all unification, right? So it's not yeah, it's not it's not changing something. It's yeah. Anyway, no. we've we've used too much time, but <laughs> I, I, like this is kind of me pushing. It's like oh, it's something there. I think there's something. It's there. a good question, Tony. Yeah, sorry, sorry for derailing with that last comment there, but no, no, um, yeah, it's it's in line with everything I was wondering. Okay, because yeah. like I think the user and genders, like you can't, like they don't sh come through secondary dependencies. Like they don't imports of imports aren't mm. going to bring them in. Yeah, and it doesn't see. It seems very opaque and the wrong way to approach like that 
I think it's better to like force the user to be explicit about that. I guess like minus the unit, the nice part of unification. But like, if I did that in one project, then like if I have the same dependency in two projects, which one has it and which one doesn't? Mm. How if I'm gonna have it in every place? How does that happen? I can't, you know, I would then like in theory wrap it and then somehow import it into all these projects so that they all stay up to date together. Uh, but you can't import into the user gen directories same way. I don't yeah, think. I, 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 I really I hold that thought about the the benefits of the user directory very very loosely. Um. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how much like the concept of replace like can supplement that. Yeah, quite work. possibly. Yeah, possibly. I, I mean, I so I, I really almost subtract the last five minutes of my um, interjection there because I, I hold it so loosely as for it not to even count for anything. So I, I'm much more in agreement with what you both said than anything that I added on the end. There's there's definitely something something to be done here, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it's, yeah, not 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 immediately, but but at some point, I I feel I feel there's something there. Um, one global Q value to rule them all. I Stop mean, it, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said that at some point. I forget uh, who. Yeah, I, I think um, change control would be interesting in that valley. In that respect. yeah, but this is this is that you know. <laughs> but you have yeah. experience in Google with giant, like one but, source tree uh, rule. Neither Rog nor I are Google at all. Yeah, and well, never have been. You got that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, micro scale. Maybe. I've been wondering about. It. I've been looking at that kind of stuff. Facebook came out with their open source version. What's it called? Sapling. Sapling. I don't know about sapling. Sapling's supposed to be like the because Facebook and Google both do the same thing. One giant source tree. There's like one problem. I were I've been liking the mono repo pattern, and mm. one big problem is like how could you put only clone like a subtree of the repo, <clears throat> or you know. Think about it more as like who has permission to what code. Yeah. Today we don't worry about it. We're like show everybody all the code. I think there's a lot of value in that. So yeah. Like there's there's a bunch of there's a bunch of bunch of interesting issues. But but we are kind of pushing towards pushing people to say, oh yeah, you use Q. You know, you have your unified view of your whole configuration. We're definitely straying off topic from modules here. Uh, <laughs> interesting though we're thing. eating into tony and jonathan's time and indeed uh, other i don't know anything but... going on i could talk about <laughs> you all day <laughs> not the other one all right <laughs> <laughs> thanks everybody uh, and the 31st of august is a reminder to call um not in two weeks time did i mean the 31st of august no i didn't i think you might have yes i did four I weeks time right thank you yeah four weeks time all right that's all Yes. Yeah,